This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Greetings and salutations, viewers. Volmer back here with another episode of Jade Empire, the finale. In the last episode, we thought we had the finale, but in a in a bit of either greed or wanting to be immortalized forever in the typical statue amongst everything, our Kira decided to take Master Lee's uh, deal in a, another reality, and we were remembered for all eternity, but we died soon and gave Lee the power he wanted. A fool's choice, and my other worldly counterpart was an idiot for doing such a thing. In this case, we're not going to stand for what Master Lee wants. We're going to fight till the very end. Is this the part where you ask me to join you? I'll answer with my fists! You are quick with a threat, as I encouraged in your earliest lessons. It is not the first time my efforts have been turned against me, but I learn quickly. I see now that the Water Dragon's power is the prize, not the means to victory. No matter what I expend, while you live, you will resist. That is your role. It is the celestial bureaucracy attempting to restore balance. We must bring the fight back down to Earth, unless you are made to see reason. Also, in the previous episode, we got to see the credits. We got to see like some of the comedic, like. Uh, uh, um, voice captures for the girl, the woman who played Dawnstar, which I'll talk about that during the credit scene. Same with the guy who did Sagacious Zoo, Henpecked Ho, and Master Lee, which I thought was a nice touch. Like I said, I wish more games did that during their credits, just to have fun at the end, because the game's over, so you can take the serious part out of it and just be silly. You know, especially if there's nothing going on during the credits, like there was no pictures or anything like that. Why not have, you know, the characters, like, either make a, either use joke reels, like, I forgot what game it was. There were some Sega CD games that did that where they started just doing joke reels during the end, like, I think, like, Vey or, or Popful Mail or something like that did stuff. And I need to find a good emulation for that or maybe get my Sega CD to work and pop those games in. Those are pretty awesome. Anyway, we're playing Jade Empire here, so we're going to choose I'm Listening again, but we're not. We're just going to skip that. So that way I can just choose a different uh, response. And we choose that one again. Um... I will be eternal anyway. The power is mine when you die. Then there is no reasoning with you. You are as much a monster as I. Let us end this. No great waves of energy. No demons from the walls. Skill versus skill. I expect you have corrected the flaw in your style. No matter. Beyond the basics, I also taught you focus. Match me if you can. Skill versus skill, huh? But yeah, there's the family. And the game gives you an autosave here, so if he kills you, you can just redo the fight, which is a nice little nice little twist. Skill skill versus skill, huh? Hmm. I wonder. Uh, this is not all Master Lee can do. I think he can use magic. He uses claw attacks. I think he's something something later on, but uh, skill versus skill. Well, your skill sucks against my gun, dude. No, and no, this isn't the only part of the fight. There's more to it than that. But okay, he uses... Fire, I think, or something like that. Um, there is more to this, if I remember correctly. So don't. Oh, he can. Oh, he can actually. Uh, okay, that sucks. I forgot. He, I forgot to get home in on you. Usually, you can just dodge that if you know what you're doing. So. Okay. Well, there you go. He's more dangerous than I thought. And you can't block it. It's just, you know, because I'm doing the. Oh, and he can also use swords too. So he has different styles. So. Oh, whoops. No. There we go. You surprise me yet again. <coughs> I'm a better teacher than I thought.
yeah, I lied. The uh, the, the final boss with uh, with uh, 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 Master Lee is just that. <laughs> you could beat him with the gun if you're in the right like distance, and you could just keep shooting him. You just blast him back. It's so funny how like okay, the gun isn't really OP when you think about it because I could have gotten killed. His fire almost did just straight out destroy me. I did run out of focus by the very end, but it's just so funny just to take the gun and just shoot him at the end. He's like skill versus skill. No, I'm just going to pop you a bunch of times before the end of the game. Obviously, if I was playing like the harder difficulty, it probably wouldn't have been that easy. And I was playing normal mode, so uh, master mode or whatever. Maybe if I was playing grandmaster, I would have had to... Because he probably would have had more HP or something like that. But uh, but yeah, that's the end of the game. We, uh, we beat Master Lee, kick his body out. All the Lotus Assassins follow us. We steal the power of the Water Dragon. And we become Emperor or whatever. And this is what I was talking about last episode, how they have a little thing about the characters like what happens to him so unfortunately there isn't like a there isn't like a open open like book ending where you get to talk to everyone and there's not like a scene where all the companions get together and talk to you even in the harmony ending there isn't anything like that it goes straight to this which i find a little disappointing i kind of wish there was a talking with everyone after you in but that's more of a jrpg thing so western rpgs usually do things a bit differently but other than that, but yeah, so now we get to, depending on your choices of the game and various impacts, it'll give you an idea of what happens to everyone at the end, uh, the ones who live anyway. So, and yeah, when you fight Master Lee at the end, you only get to fight by yourself, so you don't have any companions, which is kind of a, uh, kind of annoying at the end. But if you prepared yourself, uh, it wouldn't be, it's still hard. Master Lee is kind of a hard boss because he is the final boss of the game, and especially that magic and stuff like that. But, uh, but I think if you persevere. I, th I think I remember the first time I played it, I died against him because I, even though I had Mirabelle, I wasn't. I think I kept getting hit by his fire or something like that, or, or maybe I'm trying to remember if I got Mirabelle the first time I played the game. I think I did, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, well, let's read the little epilogue stuff for all the characters. What happened to them after the game ended? In the wake of Sun Lee's defeat, Voldemar assumed control of the Empire. Princess Lian lent the new Emperor legitimacy through her family line, and as Emperor and Empress, they turned a chaotic and fractured land into an economic and military powerhouse. Anyone challenged the rule wakened a fury that not even the gods can contain, and even whispered secrets earned quick reprisals. Empress Lian continued to prowl as the shadowy silk fox, but unbeknownst to those who had encountered this supposed outlaw, this new version was dedicated to maintaining the new order. Much as Death's Hand had served her father, she controlled the flow of all information within the Empire. This combination of power and cunning ensured the re that the reign of Aldemar would be long remembered. <laughs> I think if you're not romance with her, that ending is slightly verified, but not by a whole lot. You st she still becomes, you still become Emperor and she becomes uh, basically head assassin, uh, but there isn't like a you get together type of thing with her. And it's slightly, and obviously it's different if you choose the Harmony ending instead, uh, which maybe... I don't know if I want to spoil that just because maybe one day I'll do a Harmony playthrough this game. That'll be way down the line, though, because just, just how many episodes took me to do this in the first place. Wildflower. Well, we know what happened to her, but let's go ahead and read. Wildflower. The birth of a new god is a time of infinite possibility. Anything can be accomplished by those with the will to seize it. Ya Zhen was a prisoner in the body of the child Wildflower, but his master's ascension freed him. The ways of fate and power are fickle, and he backed the winning side. With Voldemar's power growing, he could serve no better master. This mortal with the heart of a true god would not last forever. Some day, the demon's time will come again. Unless we somehow find immortality, it's hard to say. There was never a sequel, so we don't know. You could just make up whatever story you want. For, but yeah, Yajin just waits, waits for, follows the better, better master, and waits for his own time to shine. <laughs> Kang. Um, after Lee's de Sun Lee's defeat, Voldemort fortified the Empire against any possible assault. Kang the Mad, revealed as the minor deity Lord Lao, Lu Liao, continued his service to the new Emperor, creating even more fearful tar devices, each intended for a more powerful target. Uh, which, uh, than the last. I think this still happens even if you don't do his side quest, I think. It's been a long time since I haven't done the side quest, because there are variations to the, the writings on the end when you don't do the side quest, but I don't think it changes that much, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, it's been forever since I've just tried to beat the game and not do any side quests, because it's an RPG, are you not going to do all the side quests? But the Lord Lao, uh, Lord Liao, the Lao Kang knew that someday, probably sometime after helping subjugate the rest of the heavens, he would no longer be of use. He was certain he would eventually be called to build a machine to pull his own heart out to steal his power 
and that just gave him the willies. His last invention opened a portal to another plane of existence, and he, along with a good portion of the Golden Delta, disappeared within. Nothing says, I quit, like a crater the size of a lake. <laughs> so Kang, being one of the more jokey characters, finds a way to use an intelligence to survive at the end, despite you being Discord, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> Black Whirlwind. Oh, that'll be interesting to find out what he does after everything's over. The Black Whirlwind accepted a job hunting demons for the celestial bureaucracy, but the ensuing red tape frustrated him so much that he gave up and made for the mysterious east. Shortly thereafter, the Empire received a great influx of Outlanders, many of whom were missing limbs and other body parts. He returned to the Jade Empire several years later, but this time he came from the west. He couldn't explain how he did it, but he was the only person unsurprised to arrive back when he started. Expressing a newfound hatred for, for, a pe uh, for a people who couldn't make a decent bowl of wine, the Black Whirlwind vowed to never again leave the Jade Empire. A week later, he got bored and headed off to the north. <laughs> that sounds about right. I didn't think he'd be... You don't think his ending would be sticking with the main character. Then he'd be like, all right, see you," And just leaves and goes off and has his own fun. Sir Roderick. <laughs> I like the fact that there's an ending for Sir Roderick specifically. Voiced by the mighty, um, awesome John Cleese. Uh, thanks for your role in this, my friend. Sir Roderick Ponce von Fontalbottom, the magnificent bastard, left the Jade Empire a broken man. His skills had failed him at the moment of greatest import, and he found it difficult to stomach his defeat. Despite his grand capacity, surely he had not lost as badly as he thought. Surely there was some explanation. Surely he, could, he still had something to teach this barbaric land. After much soul-searching, he traded his last pair of pantaloons for passage to the prosperous east, and he began the long journey home. It is said he eventually discovered the Fountain of Kuth, and now is now virtually unflappable. That, or he was accidentally killed by Black Whirlwind. It is hard to say. People seem to lose interest. As for Percival, he tired of being called Shirley and returned to his village. <laughs> the, the end, and then we see the credits, which we can skip. I don't got to talk to them this time. So, man, Jade Empire. I still like this game after all these years. Even playing through it again, I still like it. Now I understand that this is definitely not one of Bioware's like best games, and I don't even think it's considered on people's like top five lists. And I don't know if I'd do that as well, but I, I like this game because one, it's different from what Bioware did before. Obviously, the the beats and the 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 engine that they use is similar, but you know, a whole different environment. We get to play in you know Eastern culture, you know, absorb it into their version or their twisted version of that. But they take a lot of ideas from. Eastern culture and kind of mix in a bit of Japanese and Chinese, mainly Chinese I've noticed for the most part is what they put into this and maybe other areas around that area, at least ancient China and all that other stuff, and I like that, I thought it was kind of cool, it's like playing a martial arts movie which I like those, I'm not the biggest fan of those but I do see some fun in, in those types of movies, just over the top action craziness, you should see, if you're ever interested in like, interesting act types of action movies, you should check out like Jackie Chan stuff or Jet Li, some of their early stuff or whatever but there's other people on mine who have a better uh, idea of that anyway. But, uh, yeah, I like the combat. It's pretty straightforward. Third person. You can block and dodge. You have different abilities. You can do different skills over the course of the game that you can buy to customize your character. I just chose one of the more... I won't say... Oh, I don't... Probably my way is probably not the most overpowered version. Although, getting Mirror Bell definitely changes a lot of fights in the game. Despite how slow it is and all that, the fact that it can knock people off their asses... And, you know, and all this other stuff just makes it a very OP weapon. It's probably more cost-effective to choose, like, the sword or spear or anything like that. But, oh, and Jack Wall. Thanks to Jack Wall. He did a lot of uh, Bioware's Lair games, like Mass Effect. Well, he did, like, one and two. He didn't do three, unfortunately. They got someone else, which is sad. Uh, oh, Mike Lodlaw. I've seen his work. Most of his stuff's pretty good. There are a few of his works that weren't that great. I could see why the game was written as well as it was uh, because of him. But, yeah, Jack Wall did a lot of great music for this and... Mass Effect 1 and 2. Mass Effect 2 is probably one of my favorite modern game soundtracks as opposed, in terms of just not old-fashioned 8-bit stuff, which I like a lot of that type of stuff. Uh, but yeah, a lot of great writers on this for the most part. The music was awesome. The story was pretty, I mean, it was straightforward, but, you know, it's all about the journey, and sometimes, and there were a lot of, a lot of twists in there. And the one twist I didn't show you, and I think I can show it now that I've now that we've beaten the game. And I didn't. I skipped it because I was trying to play that kind of Discord. Didn't care. I probably should have let you in all. You probably already guessed. But Dawnstar is Master Lee's daughter. That was lost long ago. That was supposedly killed. But because I skipped a lot of that, or 
Oh, I'm just going to talk through this because we already heard this before. But because I, I skipped it and didn't really bring it up too much, it, it's not mentioned other than referenced or whatever. You could talk about to him, but he just kind of throws it back. There is a unique... Um, uh, there is a unique uh, set of dialogue if you bring if you bring Dawnstar with you to the finale, whether you're whether she's Harmony or Discord, depending on how you've been building her up throughout the game. Uh, if she's Harmony, she you can try to convince Master. There's unique dialogue with her trying to convince Master Lee to stop because she's his daughter, uh, which she finds out if you tell her about it and all that. Uh, but you still have to fight him, unfortunately. I think there's a variation in the end because of that, but still, you. And I think Dawnstar helps you at the end. I think if you do that, it's been a while since I've done that. Any, uh, there's still a dialogue if you're if you're Discord with her, which is why some people choose to bring Dawnstar with them to the finale because of that. Um, but she goes, you, but she's opposite. She goes, oh, you're my father. Well, I'm better than you now, and I don't need you, and all this other stuff. Um, that's probably one of the few things I wish I had done right in this camp, uh, game was to do the Dawnstar corrupted storyline, uh, which was over the course of the game, influencing her to be a bit more selfish. And I think I took too long doing that. I think I was. I was, I, I think I, uh, I mixed up like when was romance options and when were influence options throughout the early parts of the game. So I didn't start soon enough to corrupt her. And you could tell before we went to chapter four, she was slowly becoming like that. But I think we hit that point. I think after you leave chapter three, you could, can't really influence the characters anymore at that point. So they're stuck at that. So, oh well. But it was interesting to show you what happens if, if you don't corrupt her. She gets killed, unfortunately. But hey, and you end up with, uh, with uh, Silk Fox, um, and then you have your ending together. She becomes your uh, personal assassin. Oh, and thanks to the thanks to the doctors, Muzuki or Ray or Greg, the doctors. Thanks for thanks for the time you put into the game industry and making Bioware well up until after Mass Effect 3. And then Bioware has them in the same company, and it's hard to put them on the pedestal anymore. Um, Oh, I think I missed the I missed the uh, voice actors. I think in here. Uh, yes, no, so I was gonna talk about them, I'm, but I'm Dawn Star I, well, maybe it's still around here. We'll we'll wait and see. But um, Hi, I'm Sugeisha Zeus. But yeah, uh, but um, and then in the harmony ending, there's some variations on that, and obviously there's differences on the ending. If you've Dawn Star is your main romance interest, Sky is your romance interest, Silk Fox is your oh here's the voice actors. Okay, uh, or it should do shouldn't it do the. Uh, Oh, yeah, here's the cast. Uh, yep, John Cleese is in it. Uh, Robert Atkins Downs, he's done a lot of Bioware stuff. Uh, Nathan Fillion was the surprise gal, the lesser? Well, where did that come from? Um, oh, yeah, Kim Mao was great as Nonstar. Brian Doyle Murray, yep, as Kui. Uh, and then and Fred Tastacor, Tast or whatever his name is, I've heard him a few times. I'm trying to remember if there's any other voice actors here that I recognize. There's probably a few, but I can't recall. But yeah, Nathan Fillion was randomly in this game. That was a surprise. Actually, when I first played the game, I didn't notice Nathan Fillion's voice. The, really, the ones I noticed were Brian Doyle Murray, which is part of the Murray Brothers, related to Bill Murray, the famous comedian actor you know type of thing uh but uh but yeah john cleese when he when he came in there as, as sir percival or or uh or sorry uh sir roderick i was like what that's awesome you know because i, I like his work as uh, on uh, on all his roles as well as elf in the four lights line from from uh, star trek next generation uh but yeah that was awesome um uh, but yeah, overall, I thought the game had a, a good enough pace. You know, the the openness of two and three, giving you a chance to explore, and then kind of railroading it, which was fine with. I think they gave you just plenty. And this game is about a 34. I think I made it last longer than I should have, but this game is one of the shorter games because it was an action game. Uh, but I thought it had good pace. I thought the beginning was just long enough to get you, uh, you know, motivate you for the villain, which we didn't know as Master Lee until about till he basically kills you. Which was a nice twist. That was the big twist of the game. Bioware always has like a twist somewhere in there where you're like, because oh, you know most stories do. And that was Master Lee, uh, not uh, Master Lee being secretly like this whole time was being manipulated behind the background. And I like the fact that they didn't. They they try to. They, they kind of twist the whole. Oh, you could convince him to stop. You can't do that. He's the villain. He was playing this the whole time. He did care for you in some extent, but it was at that point where you were just a tool. Because most stories would make you try to convince him, and that would have been one of the endings. But they don't do that. Even when Dawnstar with you, you can't convince him to to do it. You get just you get some unique dialogue. So that was a nice change of pace um, of it. But 
dangerous level um, two what else to say I just like this game in general um, uh, like I said it was different from their other stuff Come on, great music great, great story all the I thought most of the characters were interesting um, for the most part there are a few instances there where I was like eh, I could have worked on it a bit more but and I feel like this game was slightly rushed I think there are bits and pieces of the story I think could have lasted gone a little bit longer and unfortunately, because this didn't do as well as others, we'll never get a sequel. And that's the saddest thing about this is I'm hoping one day maybe someone else will get the license for this game because I don't even think EA cares about this license. And Bioware, no one at Bioware talks about it anymore. So I'm almost hoping that maybe one day the license goes out and someone else tries to do something with this. Or if you're a game developer, maybe try to do something similar to this, like make a game based in the based in a you know a fantastical you know Eastern setting where you can play something similar. Or something different. There was like an RPG I saw online about uh, 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 a company that made an RPG based in Africa, which I thought was kind of neat. I haven't played it yet. It looked neat. And uh, I don't think I played the RPGs that are based in Africa, just specifically. And I think that idea sounds pretty neat. Because we never. I don't. There's hardly any games that do that. You know, there's books and stuff like that, but hardly any games. But. Um, oh, I didn't realize we were going to finish this way before the 30 minute mark. Um. Oh, I guess I could show really quick what Radiant Zoo is. I think that was what the one that uh, that uh, the guy who was playing Sagacious Zoo, what he, uh, um, the one he liked. Let me go to the new game again, really quick, and show that character. Oh yeah, Radiant Genji. She's usually she's shown on the front as being the uh, the. Um, let's see. No, her and this dude are shown to be the like mascots of the game. I like her design. It's very cute. Um, I think the first time I played the game, I played as Monk Zeng because he was he's DLC that came with the special edition of the game. You could probably find, if you play the PC version, I bet there's a mod to download. Or maybe the full game gives you it to you. Because at the time, you could only get it if you got the collector edition or if you got the disc. There was, a, there was a disc with this that has it on it. That's how you get it. Probably the PC version either has it already on there, or there's probably a mod that someone was able to pull the info out and you could get Monk Zang. It's basically Monk Zang and that um, uh, Monk Staff thing you get for doing that. But uh, actually, actually, no, it's it's Wu, Wu, and uh, Wu and uh, Furious Ming are the mascot characters. Sorry. Although a lot of concept art showed Radiant Gen G, which, like I said, she's cute. Although, I think I was a fan of the female models. I liked Scholar Link because I kind of like that. Because she's the magic user character. And I just kind of like that whole... I like the like the bodice there that kind of pushes up right there in the middle. I think that's kind of cute. And I just like the design of it overall. And blue is my favorite color. So, I like that overall. But um, And just the endings are... Like, the ending where you get the statue changes depending on which model you use. Which is kind of neat. I like the fact that they change the, the statue depending on which model you choose from. Um, but that's all that changes is just slight differences and stuff like that. And obviously the game has different dialogue if you play as female, uh, female spirit monk or male spirit monk. Maybe if I ever do re play the game like years down the line, if I ever decide to do it, I'll play harmony playthrough and play as the a female monk instead, and maybe do the um, sky romance because it's been forever since I've done that one. Um, but uh, but yeah, you can oh, keeps going to that. What many games can you play? Is it just the different? Oh, and then there's the... Oh, wow. I didn't realize there was many... Huh, I must have missed a couple of Sky Encounters over the course of the game. Hmm. I bet it's some Harmony quests or something like that. Cause, well, no, I did the... Uh, I did the, all the... Because uh, I don't remember these two. And it says complete quests in Jade Empire, but I don't remember these two. Although I doubt they're much different. But, yeah, I didn't realize there was that many, like... Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, there's 15 like different flying uh, flying events, which is kind of cool. Huh. Um, see, did I show the game demos last time I played? I think I, or when I started, I think I talked about them. Oh, but yeah, I'm not going to... Uh-oh, I hope I, I can back out. <laughs> nope. Okay, well, that kicked me out of the main menu, so... All right, folks, well, uh, no, I don't want to update. No, I don't want to do that. I might have to edit that because that might mess up the uh, that might mess up my recording option on that because um, I didn't mean I forgot I think I did that last time and I had to like I also had to fix or edit that part out which I may end up doing that anyway. Um, oh, there's my saying there, but uh, what else can I say about this game? Um, 
I just I really like this game. I, I just like that it's a different type of setting in your standard fantasy than the um than the uh uh um than the t standard medieval European setting, which is fine. I like that too, but I like this just because it was different. But, but yeah, I uh, I hope you all enjoyed my play through this game. I know it wasn't the most efficient run through, when I missed some things, or I or I forgot some things, or I did some things differently or wrong. But I hope I still gave you uh, an idea if you like the game or not. If you liked it, go buy it. It's still available on like most platforms like Steam, good old games and stuff like that. And I think it's only like ten bucks. 10 bucks for a 30 to 40 hour action adventure of this of this magnitude. Uh, I think it's worth worth buying personally. Although I don't know who gets the I guess Bioware gets the money, which it's hard to support. Well, I don't want to go I don't want to talk about this in this game, but let's just say things aren't the same as they used to and I'll, I'll have heavy nostalgia for this game and I'll always keep it on one of my lists of of, of favorites amongst many others. So so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time when I pull another game off my shelf. Thanks for watching.